In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can resize an image inside of Photoshop without losing any detail or resolution. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be quite short and basic. How it came about was that I have a friend of mine who has recently started to learn how to use Photoshop. And he was trying to create a collage with about 20 photographs on one page. And what he ran into was this problem where as he was shrinking images and then enlarging them again, he found that the quality was degrading. He was losing quality and pixels. And I immediately knew what was wrong with his approach. And so rather than explaining it to him over the phone, I thought that I would make a video to help him and also anyone else that's run into this problem. So if you're finding that you have run into this problem yourself, let's jump onto the computer now and I'll show you how to get around it. Okay, so like I said, this is a fairly easy thing to fix. However, when you're first starting to learn how to use Photoshop, uh, you can run into this problem and if you don't know how to fix it, it can drive you absolutely insane. So uh, let me show you how to fix this. I've got a selection of images here. I'm going to select two of them. Uh, let's say this one here, and then also I'm going to command and click on this one. I'm going to right mouse click on the image. I'm going to go down to edit in and then navigate to open as layers in Photoshop. The reason that I selected that is because I want both images to open up in the one file as separate layers, but it's one file inside of Photoshop, as you can see here. It's opened up uh, the, the, the files, but it's got the, the two images in separate layers. So uh, if I disable this one, you'll see that there is another one underneath it. So both images are in there now. So uh, let's have a look at the detail in the images first. As you can see here, there's plenty of detail. It's nice and sharp. Let's look at the next one. Uh, you can see here that it's also nice and sharp. In fact, you can even see the reflection of myself in her eye there. So loads and loads of detail. Now, let's switch the other one back on. And let's just say that for whatever reason, I need to shrink this image down. Perhaps I'm uh, making a collage or something like that. So I'm going to resize this image. And we know that we can do this by using the Command T or Control T key combinations on our keyboard. So I am going to uh, press the Command and T key, and you can see that the handles are now being activated outside of the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shrink this down, and I'm, make, I'm gonna make it nice and small, okay? And then I am going to click the little tick box here, and uh, that's made the image small. And for whatever reason, let's just say that I now, I've, I've changed my mind and I want that image to be nice and big. So again, I'm going to uh, select the image again. I'm going to do a Command T again, and then I'm going to bring this up again and make it nice and big. And one of the things that you will notice is that the image looks very, very pixelated. And the reason that it, it looks like that is that when we shrank it down, Photoshop does a thing called rasterized and it rasterized the image. And what that means is that it compressed the image, but because it was so small, it didn't need all those pixels to represent a small version of the file. So it gets rid of a lot of those pixels. But of course, when you then um, enlarge the photograph again, all those extra pixels are missing. And so you end up with something that looks like this. Now, Photoshop will try and fix this for you. So if I click on the little tick box up here, what it does is, it tries to recover something. However, you'll notice that we've lost a lot of detail in the in the shot. So this is a destructive way of working. And the reason that this happens is because we are working on a normal layer. So what we want to do is we want we want to prepare the layer so that this doesn't happen. Let's switch to our second image. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. However, before we do that, we are going to select the layer we're going to right mouse click on the layer and then we are going to go to down to convert to smart object okay now what this does is that it prepares the or converts the layer in a particular way so that you never ever lose any of the quality but also it allows you to go back to the layer if you're applying filters and or effects 
which means you can go back and you can edit those effects afterwards. They're not applied just once and then baked into the layer. You can go back and actually alter it again. So let's have a look at this again now. Let's do a Command T on this image here, and we are going to shrink it down. In fact, we'll make it really, really small, okay? So we're going to click the tick box up there, and now we are going to do the same thing. We're going to do a con uh, Command T, and we're going to enlarge it again, okay? And what you will see is that there is no loss whatsoever in resolution or in quality. Let me zoom in so you can see. You can see that is just as sharp as it was before. Okay, so this is really, really important when you're uh, playing around with images. In fact, just as a matter of, uh, of habit, really, whenever I work inside of Photoshop, whenever I create a new layer, I always convert it to a smart object so that it doesn't matter what I do to that layer. It always gives me the option to be able to re reverse it or maybe alter some of the um, some of the uh, the effects that I apply onto the layer itself. But that's a really quick and easy way to. Um, to be able to make sure to ensure that this doesn't happen to you. Now, one of the things that uh, Adobe has introduced, I'll just go back to Lightroom for a second, is that I'll just select this other image and I'll right mouse. In fact, let's select a couple of images here. Let's select these two here. I'm going to right mouse click in here and then I'm going to go back to edit in Photoshop and you will notice that Photoshop has now added this open as smart object layers inside of Photoshop. So if for future reference, you should be selecting this option as opposed to the other option, because this new option here will automatically open them up inside of, uh, inside of Photoshop. However, you will notice that they were already create, they're already created or opened up as smart objects. And the way that you know whether something is a smart object or not is you will notice this little square box in, in the tile, in the preview tile. There's a little square box over there in the corner that represents uh, that it is a smart object. Let me go back to the other one that we were working on before and you will notice, I'll just turn this back on, that the bottom layer is a smart object and the one above it uh, is not a smart object, which means that if I keep playing around with the size of this file here, I will continue to lose uh, detail again. In fact, let me show you what I mean. I'm just gonna do a Command T again. I'm gonna shrink this down again. And there's only so many times that I can do this before the, the file is just completely unusable. So I'll do that and then I'll do the same thing. I'll expand it again. And you can see that it's just getting, it keeps getting worse and worse. Every time I do this, at some point, it's going to lose so much quality do it again. It's got really, really tiny this time. Click it and then let's open it up again. And at some point, it's just going to be unusable like what you see here. Even if I click on the OK here, now you can see that the file is just, it's completely falling apart. Uh, whereas the other one, uh, let's switch to the other one. The other one is still tag sharp. So that is how you get around resizing images and not losing any quality. So I hope that all of that made sense, but if it didn't or you have some questions, do leave them in the comments section of this video. And in fact, if you've got any questions about Photoshop that you think I might be able to help you with, put them in the comments section. And if I can help you, I will help you. And if you would like to support me, you can do so by clicking the like button. Uh, it's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it makes a huge difference to me. And if you do want to see more content like this, do click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. And that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Anyway, that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.